Hello there, welcome back to the second video of A-Level Physics. I'm so excited about today's topic, accelerated motion. Just a reminder that if you have not subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe. This will help more people to discover this chapter and this allowed me to provide free education to more people. Thank you so much. Right, a word cloud for this chapter. You will see a lot of terms that you might not be familiar with. But do notice that Ronaldo is here. I will let you know what it means later. And by the sure that, this is also the chapter outlined. You feel free to skip over to the chapters that you're interested in. Now, let's look into the first subchapter, which is acceleration. We already learned this in IGCSE physics. So what it means is how fast an object can move from, for example, zero kilometer per hour to 100. So in this case here, a sports car will definitely have a higher acceleration than Mr. Bean's car because they can go from 0 to 100 in 3 seconds whereas Mr. Bean's car will take 20 seconds to reach the same speed. So this is a vital difference between velocity, speed and acceleration. Speed, how fast they are traveling at that particular time. Acceleration is about how fast it gets to that speed. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity and the formula is V minus U over T and the unit is meter per second square. Some real life example of acceleration, you will see that car speeding up when overtaking and roller coaster descending due to gravity. And car changing direction is also a form of acceleration because when a car changes direction, velocity change. When velocity change, acceleration will change too. Last but not least, landing of a skydiver. That might be deceleration. We also have a velocity time graph that can help us to calculate acceleration. So this is a velocity time graph here and it shows a, an object velocity at a particular time and the, the gradient of a velocity which is the rate of change of velocity is the acceleration. Now just to solve a question real quick, what is the acceleration of the car from t equal to 0 to t equal to 4 and how we can solve that is to use the gradient of the graph. So I'm going to use point number one and point number two and apply that into my formula and I'll get the acceleration. The next one is also something we touch in IGCSE physics. To calculate the displacement traveled by an object in a velocity time graph, we can just calculate the area under graph. Usually, if it's a trapezium, I split them into two parts, the triangle and the rectangle to make it simple to calculate. So I will just plug in all the values for multiply by 35 by half, which is the area of the rectangle, the triangle followed by the area of the rectangle, and this is the result that I get. So just to summarize, this is how velocity time graph is. The steeper the slope, the higher the acceleration. The positive slope represents acceleration, the negative slope represents deceleration, and no slope is constant speed. The speed doesn't change, but the object is still moving. Lastly, the changing slope indicate that the acceleration is changing. If you watch my first video, you'll have noticed that, well, they look the same as displacement time graph, so in this case, it's just the quantities that are different. Now let's look into the very important part of this chapter, the equations of motion. I'll be teaching you four equations to help you solve different problems. And these four equations has the following quantities, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, displacement, and time. And to apply this formula, these are some criteria that you need to know. The acceleration throughout the motion must be constant, must not change, and the motion of the object occurs in a straight line rather than a curved line, and at least three of the five variables must be known. Now, it's pretty hard to imagine, so let's try to solve some questions with this equation. So these are the four equations that you have to memorize. A ball is dropped from a height of 20 meters. How long does it take to reach the ground? At this point, you may be wondering, how do I solve that? Well. The known quantities that is in the sentence here is only one. But then I want you to know that some quantities you can derive it from the question itself. For example, you have the displacement 20 meter and you also have the acceleration. So this acceleration quantity is the same throughout the, the whole earth because that's the acceleration of free fall. And u is the initial velocity. You can see that the ball is not moving initially, so you can safely assume it's zero. So the question asks you to find time. Now, you have three known quantities here. So what you can do is just look at all four formulas and determine which formula has all the quantities stated here, S, A, U, and T. So I'm going to give you two seconds. One, two, boom. The equation that has all this value is equation three. You have S, you have U, you have T, and you have A. So all you need to do is just substitute the value into these equations and find the unknown value T. So I'm not gonna go through the linear algebra of this question because I think that's mathematics. So after you have solved all the questions, substitute value, you should have found that T is equal to 2.02 .02 second. It takes two seconds for the basketball to fall. So let's have more questions. 
So again, you have a car accelerates from rest, that's a key info, u equal to zero. Rate of three, this is the acceleration, five seconds, the time, what's the final velocity? So just list down all the known quantities alongside with the quantity that you want to find. Determine which formula, in this case it should be equation one, and substitute the value and then you should be able to find out the answer already. Now how you can approach this video is you can pause before I show you the answer. That will help you to learn better. So the next question you have train traveling at this speed. So initial velocity. It has also has a final velocity. It has the time. What is the distance traveled? Again, find the equation that you need to use and substitute the value, find the answer. Lastly, you have initial velocity, maximum height, acceleration ex experience, and the distance. So in this case, I'll use equation four. Again, nothing difficult. What's difficult for some of you might be how, how are you going to memorize the four formulas? So that's something that you need to do. So another thing that you will be required to do is to derive the formula, the four formulas. I'm going to show you how to do that. Equation one can be derived from the formula for acceleration. So using this formula, you just move t to the other side and then move u all the way to another side, to right hand side, and you will get equation one already. So that's pretty straightforward. That's how you get equation one. Equation two will require a velocity time graph. So look at this graph here. To find out displacement, you know that displacement is equal to velocity times time. So in this case, because we are assuming that acceleration is constant, the object is traveling in the same line, we can safely use the average speed, which is u plus v divided by two, multiply by time. This will give us the displacement. And that's how we got equation two, simple. Whereas you can also use the area under graph to calculate, use the trapezium formula to calculate the displacement under this velocity time graph. Equation three, it involved the usage of equation one and two. So what you need to do is just substitute equation one into equation two here. So you can see that there is a final velocity symbol here. I'm gonna put u v equal to u plus a t into this formula. And that's what I will get and do some simplification and then you should be able to get equation number three, which is over here. Feel free to pause the video and try to derive it all by yourself. Next, we have equation four can also be gotten using equation one and two. So first we make t the subject in equation one, meaning I move t <coughs> to be the subject and then I substitute the value of t into my formula here and then we can do some simplification. You will know that v plus u multiplied by v minus u, this is what you'll get, what we learn in math. And we'll move 2a to the other side and rearrange the order and you should get equation 4 already. So that's how you can derive all four formulas using basic quantities. Now, the next subchapter is uniform acceleration versus non-uniform acceleration. So uniform acceleration in a velocity time graph, it will be a straight line. It means that the object is accelerating at a constant rate. Whereas non-uniform acceleration, you can see that in this graph here, they accelerate pretty quickly in the beginning. The gradient is pretty steep, but after that, it will just get, the gradient get lower and lower. This means that it is still speeding up, but speeding up at a slower speed, slower rate. So non-uniform acceleration, you might be wondering, how, do, how then do I find the acceleration? You can do that by drawing a tangent across the point where you want to find acceleration on. Say you want to find what's the acceleration when t is equal to two. All you need to do is to draw a tangent, make sure that you connect to t equal to two, and using this tangent line here, you calculate the gradient of that tangent, and this will give you the acceleration. So for displacement, we already mentioned, if you want to find displacement under velocity time graph, just find the area under graph. But for non-uniform graph, you might need to do some integration, something you learn in additional mathematics to find out what's the area of this part here to find out the displacement. So another thing about acceleration is that we have acceleration of free fall occurring on Earth. It's the constant acceleration experienced by an object due solely to the gravitational pull. There's no external force involved. It's just due to the Earth gravity. And the amount is 9.81 meter per second squared. So to illustrate them in diagram, assuming that I release a ball from this height here. In the first second, it will accelerate this amount, meaning the speed will be 9.81 meter per second. And in the second second, it will accelerate the same amount again. So that's when my speed moved from 9.81, 19.62. So you can see that as each second passes, the ball travel more and more distant 
per unit second. So this is how acceleration work. I'm just trying to show how it affects the distance traveled by the ball here. Right, now let's move on to the slightly harder part of this chapter called projectiles. So you, I have a ping pong ball and ping pong table here. And you can see that the ball is moving like that. And in this case here, the ball is actually under, undergoing two different types of forces. As they descend and ascend, the vertical movement of this ball is affected by the gravity. Whereas the horizontal movement can be affected by air resistance. So why do we need to split the factors into vertical and horizontal? When we consider the ball vertical and horizontal motion independently, we can analyze them easily, which is the concept of vector decomposition. It's the process of breaking down a vector, here V, into its perpendicular components. So suppose an object moves with a velocity V at angle delta from the east, this means that the object is moving diagonally. And it's pretty hard to analyze a diagonal movement. That's why we often break it down into its horizontal and vertical component. In this case, I named it Eastern and Northern. And to calculate the value of those components, again, trigonometry comes in. I know the angle. I know the velocity. To find out the value of this, you can see that I have the adjacent, I have the hypotenuse. That's when I can use cosine. And by doing some linear algebra, I will find that the eastern component is V cos delta. So if you substitute all the value in, you should find the eastern component. Right, the northern part, so in this case, I will calculate this part because they are the same. You can see that delta is opposite and hypotenuse. I have opposite and hypotenuse. So I will use sine and doing some movement algebra, then I should find that northern component is V sine delta. And to summarize, that's how I figure out the components of each reactor. In this case, I'm, g I'm gonna give you some examples to help you know how to apply them in the exam. For example, if an object is moving at 10 meter per second at an angle of 30, the eastern component will be 10 cos 30, which will give you 8.66, and northern component 5 meter per second. And again, if I give you another example with the angle at different place, again, it's, I don't recommend memorizing. Just look at the angle and if you are finding the softened component, you know that this is the adjacent. When you have adjacent rather than opposite, that's when you can use cosine. So I use 15 cos 60, whereas for rest, I will use 15 sine 60 to get the amount. Now let's solve some uh, real life question that can be hard to picture if you don't know vector decomposition. First question, if the volleyball player hits the volleyball with an initial velocity of 50, what's the maximum height that the ball will reach? So this question requires equations of motion. So we have the initial velocity which is 50 and we want to find the displacement and we know that the moment the ball reaches the maximum height its value will be zero because it will, be, it will stop there and what's tricky is the value of acceleration look when the ball travels upward it will decelerate because the gravity will pull it down so that's when i put a equal to negative 9.81 instead of positive 9.81 and with all these values you know that you can use the equation of motion just pick a formula substitute the value and you should be able to find out that the height is 127.5 meter. In this case, it doesn't require vector decomposition yet. So how long will it take to fall back to the ground? So again, I have all the known quantities here. You see that I put S equal to zero. It means that if it falls back to the ground, it means it, it doesn't really move away from its original position. So that's something that you need to imply instead of expecting them to give you that, okay, displacement is zero. And again, with all the quantities known, you can find out the time using the equations of motion. I did not go through step by step because I think it will waste your time. So I have written down the solution beforehand. Now let's apply some curve projection. So the volleyball player hits the volleyball horizontally now with a velocity of 35. You can see it's doing a spike. Calculate how long the ball takes to reach the ground considering that the highest point the ball reach is 2 meter. She hits her, the ball horizontally. So we need to calculate how long the ball takes to reach the ground. So how can we do that? So we know the initial velocity is zero because it's he, she's hitting at the highest point. And A is 9.81 because it's traveling downward as is equal to two. Again, I can apply the formula to calculate the time. That's when we know that we can use velocity multiplied by time to find out the distance traveled. So in this case, in question example number one and example number two, it still revolves around equations of motion because I'm just trying to help you recap 
the concept. But in the next question, that's when vector de decomposition comes in, which is the Ronaldo that I mentioned. Now, calculate the horizontal distance covered by the ball, meaning the moment Ronaldo kicks it with an initial speed of 35 meters per second at an angle. 40 degree. Now to solve this question, we need to first find out the ball horizontal velocity. Because to find out distance, we know that we need velocity, we need time, all right? But we can't use 35 because that's not the horizontal velocity, that's just the velocity of this graph. So to find the horizontal velocity, I will use cos because it's adjacent towards the angle given. 35 cos 40, so this is the horizontal velocity of the ball. I'm also calculating the vertical because even though they didn't ask, but it will be required in the next question. So the vertical velocity is this, 35 sine 40, 22.5. And we've gotten the velocity. Now it's time to find out the time, meaning how long the ball was on the air. With the amount of time we, had, we can calculate the distance travel. So we know the vertical velocity is 22.5. That's why we calculate it. So you can put it into the equation of motion and acceleration is negative because can be traveling is traveling upward it should be decelerating s is equal to zero because it doesn't travel the displacement vertically is zero and time is what we want to find again applying the equations of motion based on all the known quantities we can calculate how much time it travels so now we have the horizontal velocity we have the time that it travels all we need to do is to multiply the velocity and time together and we should find how far the ball has traveled. Of course, all, for all this question that I am proposing here, I'm really trying to simplify it. I'm ignoring a lot of factors like air resistance, the ground friction. So it's not really possible in real life, but I just want to show you how to combine the usage of vector decomposition plus the equations of motion to solve a real life question. And that's it for this chapter. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot of stuff here. I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye.